Kelsey Brennan Wessels for ESA Web TV, and I join you today from Talis Alenia Space. Behind me is the Sentinel 3B satellite, and beside me is Craig Donlin, who's a mission scientist for Sentinel 3. Now, of course, Sentinel 3 is looking at oceans and land, but looking at oceans, how has Sentinel 3A, which has already been in orbit for two years, helped us understand, better understand oceans? Well, uh, Sentinel-3 is a workhorse for Copernicus. It gives us that great bigger picture because it's a multi-instrumented mission. We can look at the ocean color and the biology, uh, and we can feel and see how the ocean is living. Uh, we can look at the wind, and we can look at the waves from the altimeter, uh, which is really important for mariners. Uh, and it's also important for exchange of air-sea uh, gases, such as CO2. It's how we get the gas in and out of the atmosphere. And then, of course, related to that is the temperature of the ocean, which we can also measure from our Sentinel-3 sea and land surface temperature instrument. So really Sentinel-3 is right at the very core of oceanography in science. And it's science, it's those scientific measurements that translate into the operational systems of not only today, but tomorrow. Okay, well. so going from scientists, how does it affect me in my life? Well, take, uh, for example, the weather forecast. Um, in order to get heat from the equator up to the poles, um, which is put in by the sun, you need to make sure you understand how the ocean circulation patterns are working. And our altimeter gives us uh, a great handle on that. By looking at the height of the ocean, you can derive the ocean currents. And we have a great project at ESA called Glob Current, which has been mapping uh, the ocean currents over the last 20 years from a variety of different altimeters. And now we're using Sentinel-3 to get that extra push uh, using the SAR altimeter. And that helps us understand then how the heat gets from the equator to the poles, and that is what's driving our weather forecast to a certain degree. So then I need to know if I need to bring an umbrella with me or not when I leave the house. Absolutely. What happens in the distant ocean is affecting you in your daily life uh, every day, even though you don't know it. So the ocean's really important for us. And then, of course, there's also the, the subject of sea level rise. There are people who are living in low-lying areas who are also affected by the ocean. So does Sentinel-3 help them too? Absolutely. I mean, Sentinel-3 carries a precise altimeter which can measure the height of the ocean. And related back to where the ocean meets the land using tide gauges, we can monitor sea level rise. And imagine if you were trying to make that measurement uh, using a different method on ships. How many ships would you need, Kelsey, to go and do that? An enormous number. So in fact, it's the satellite data that give you access to that global bigger picture that is Copernicus. And it's really important because for some states, it's a critical issue. Um, as sea level rises, the very land that they're living and working on is disappearing. As much as it is for the people that are moving to the mega cities and the coastal zones. Here, uh, we're losing land and we have to uh, take, um, take precautionary measures uh, to make sure we understand how to mitigate the, the, the impacts of sea level rise. So Sentinel-3A is already giving us this information. Why do we need Sentinel-3B? Sentinel-3B, for altimetry, let's say, gives us that added coverage. So we have a special orbit that we've chosen in operations that maximizes uh, what we call the interleave between the satellite tracks at roughly every four days, which resonates then with the ocean's uh, mesoscale activity. So we get better coverage. That's one thing. And it's the same for the ocean color. We fill in the gaps, and particularly those gaps that are caused by the presence of clouds, because we can't see through clouds. Um, for the ocean uh, temperatures, again, it's coverage and it's revisit, so we can go back to the same place more often. Now, we also have one extra uh, special uh, feature of Sentinel-3 A and B, which is that we're going to fly them just 30 seconds in time apart. So it's really, really close for the first couple of months of uh, life on orbit. Now, I'm going to interrupt you there. Usually these satellites that are flying the Sentinel-1 mission, Sentinel-2 mission, they're flying 180 degrees apart, correct? So they're on opposite sides of the globe as they go around. That's right. So the first part I just explained was that we're at 140 degrees to make sure we get this nice sampling in operations. But now we're very, very close for the commissioning period. And that means we assume that the atmosphere in the ocean stay the same and it allows us to look at the, the differences in calibration between the instruments on board the A and the B satellites. Why do we need to do that? Well, we have a program at ESA called the Climate Change Initiative, and here we're trying to stitch together all the different missions in time to give us a climate data record. And the intercalibration and the knowledge of that calibration between different satellites is extremely important. So by doing this special tandem mission, we can address the needs of the Global Climate Observing System, GCOS, by making sure we have a well-calibrated time series. So this is really special for ESA and really exciting for science. But will they stay that close or will they then? No, they'll just stay there for about four to five months depending on how the configuration works on orbit at the time. And then 
Then we drift back into the 140 degree separation, which gives us that beautiful sampling for mesoscale oceanography. That's what the Copernicus services want. That's what the European Commission asked us to do. And we're flexible and we can address those user needs. So looking forward to Sentinel-3, it's going to be great. Well, Craig, thank you so much. Thanks, Kelsey. And to our viewers, remember, to learn more about space or about our planet, you can visit our website, www.isa.int.